LXL A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 1, October 2021, Question 12. Figure 3 is a graph of the trajectory of a golf ball after the ball has been hit until it first hits the ground. The vertical height h meters of the ball above the ground has been plotted against the horizontal distance travelled x meters measured from where the ball was hit. The ball is modelled as a particle travelling in a vertical plane above horizontal ground. Given that the ball is hit from a point on the top of a platform of vertical height 3 meters above the ground, it reaches its maximum vertical height after travelling a horizontal distance of 90 meters and is at a vertical height of 27 meters above the ground after travelling a horizontal distance of 120 meters. Given also that h is modelled as a quadratic function in x, we need to find h in terms of x. As h is modelled as a quadratic function, we know it must be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are constants to be found. Using our first bullet point, we know it's starting at 0, 3. So when x is 0, h is 3. Well, this means the c at the end, that would be the only thing left if x was 0. So our quadratic must be h equals ax squared plus bx plus 3. We can now use our second bullet point. It's a maximum vertical height at a horizontal distance of 90 metres. Well, at the maximum vertical height, dh by dx must be equal to 0. So if we differentiate h, we get 2ax plus b. This must be equal to 0 when x is 90. So substituting 90 in, we get that 0 equals 180a plus b. Our third bullet point is the vertical height of 27 metres when the horizontal distance is 120. So at x equals 120, h equals 27. Putting this into our equation, it gives us 27 equals 14,400a plus 120b plus 3. We can rearrange to get 14,400a plus 120b equals 24. And a quick bit of inspection, all of that, those terms are divisible by 24. So let's do that just to make things a bit easier. So 600a plus 5b equals 1. We've now got two equations in terms of a and b. The one we've just found and our dh by dx one, which switching the sides is 180a plus b equals 0. This is just our equation from above. These are simultaneous equations, so let's label them 1 and 2. We can see that if we multiply the second one there by 5, both our equations will have 5b in them. So if we subtract, we'll cancel out the b's. So we're going to do the top one minus 5 of the bottom one. So 600 minus 5 lots of 180, that gives us minus 300a, and that's equal to 1. 1 minus 5 lots of 0. So a is equal to minus 1 over 300. From equation 2, we can quickly see that b is equal to minus 180a. So minus 180 times by minus 1 over 300 is equal to 3 fifths. So there we have it. Our equation is h equals minus 1 over 300 times x squared plus 3 fifths x plus 3. Hence find, according to the model, the maximum vertical height of the ball above the ground. So we're told earlier that the maximum vertical height is when we've got a horizontal distance of 90 meters. So x equals 90, we're going to put that into our quadratic equation. So h equals minus 1 over 300 times 90 squared plus 3 fifths times 90 plus 3 equals 30 meters. Part 2, the horizontal distance traveled by the ball from when it was hit to when it first hits the ground, giving an answer to the nearest meter. So when the ball hits the ground, h must be equal to 0. So we're going to set our quadratic equal to 0 and now solve this. We could use the quadratic equation, it doesn't really matter. We can also use the quadratic solving function on the calculator. This is what I've done, it gives us answers of 184.87 or minus 4.87. But we can see quite quickly that we want the positive answer because it's hitting the ground to the right on the graph. So 184.87 rounded to the nearest meter is 185 meters. Part C, the possible effects of wind or air resistance are two limitations of the model. We need to give one other limitation of this model. Well, in the setup of the model, the ball is modeled as a particle. Well, in real life, the ball is not a particle, so it has dimensions. 
So this is one limitation of the model. Other examples would be things like the ground is not completely horizontal, or the spin of the ball might make the ball travel outside of the plane. Anything like that is a perfectly good answer. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.